Welcome back. I'm Shane. This is Relative Time. And today we're going to take a look at a watch that oozes retro Seiko goodness. This is the Proxima PX1695. With its textured dial and smaller size of 38 millimeters, it immediately reminded me of some of those great old Seiko 5s. The ones that were around when I first started getting to watches, way before they changed the logo with the 5K axis, back when it was all about the SNKs and SNKLs. So when I saw this and it reminded me of those, I immediately agreed to do the review. I just figured Proxima was onto something. But after doing a little bit more research, I realized that this is actually an homage to a lesser known Seiko 5 from the late 70s, specifically the 4883-8100 which was part of their Quartz Seiko Superior line. Now, to be perfectly honest, I don't know a whole lot about those old Seiko Superiors. That was a bit before my time. But what I can tell you is that Proxima did a fantastic job here creating a modern automatic version with the PX1695. One quick note for transparency here, and that's that Proxima did provide the watch and they aren't asking for it back, hence that promotional tag. Although, for whatever reason, Proxima always asked me to pay for shipping, which I was happy to do to get this one. Random note, but just trying to be transparent here. Now with that out of the way, let's talk specs. So the width on this one is 38 millimeters without and 41 millimeters with the screwed down crown. While lug to lug sits at 45.7, and that's all with a total thickness of 11.8. So for some, and especially those with slimmer wrists, this is probably an ideal size, especially with 200 meters of water resistance, a domed sapphire crystal with AR, as well as a total weight of around 75 grams on its leather strap, and it's all powered by Seiko NH36A. Now, on my 7.25 inch wrist, the watch does wear a little flat, and it's probably apparent when you look at the case back. There's not much curvature going on here, but there is no overhang, and as a whole, it is still pretty comfortable. One thing to note here is that while the case is 38 millimeter at its widest point, if you look at the case shape, you'll notice that it tapers as it goes up towards the crystal, to the point that it's only 36 millimeters at that clean polished bezel. So I'd say it easily wears like a 38, but visually looks a bit smaller thanks to that. Now, before we get too far with this one, I should probably address the elephant in the room, or in this case, the unicorn on the dial. If you're not familiar with Proxima, they have their own website, but they're primarily an AliExpress brand. And for whatever reason, don't ask me why, a unicorn is their logo. I asked once, but didn't really get much of an answer, or at least not one that made sense. So maybe it's just something lost in translation. Although Proxima also has a sister brand called Unidive. And usually when they make a watch, they make a version for each with each different logo. So if you like the watch here, but don't really want to be rocking a unicorn on your wrist, go check out the Unidive version. One of the most interesting aspects of this watch is its very unusual case shape, where it's not very wide, but it is proportionally longer extending out and angling down, creating this cool multi-tiered angled platform, as well as creating enough area to carve out hidden lugs on the back. In some ways, it is unusual to see a 20mm lug on a case this small. Usually on a 38, I'd expect more like an 18mm strap. But the way they've done it here, I think really helps to integrate those larger straps into the design. The top of the case here also has a brushed finish to it. But there is a polished chamfered edge that also runs down the length of each side, helping to highlight and further define those unusual angles along with the polished bezel holding the sapphire crystal. Now as domed crystals go, this one isn't very tall or very aggressive with its curvature, but I think it works pretty well for the style they're going for. It's always nice to have a domed crystal, but anything taller I think would be more of a distraction here. Over at the right, you have a smaller crown. It isn't signed, and in that way maybe they're truly keeping with that Seiko style, but it is screwed down and that combined with 200 meters of water resistance make this a casual watch that's ready for just about anything. So for the most part, I'm liking what I'm seeing here, but there is one thing I don't like, and that's the highly polished sidewalls. Perhaps they are fitting for the retro design, but to me it always represents future smudges and scratches. At least they went for a brush case back that's only highlighted by a polished edge on the back. So that's good, 
even if it is a touch generic looking. Overall though, I do like all these detailed angles and edges on the front of the case, which to be fair is in keeping with that original Seiko inspiration. But I still appreciate that Proxima followed through with that. And that's something you can say about the dial as well. I really love all the small details here, as it creates a ton of depth thanks to all those textures and layers. And it winds up creating an amazing dial for the price. Everything begins with this white dial that has a textured pattern etched all over it, which is in keeping with its retro inspiration. But to modern eyes, it also gives it just a touch of Grand Seiko-ness with their textured dials. On top of that sits applied indices, which are these polished metallic platforms that extend down towards the center. Yet they also rise upwards as you move towards the outer edges. One of the coolest aspects here is that the chapter ring also appears to be applied polished wedges. Much smaller than the indices, yet they are scattered throughout, creating this mini stonehenge that circles the interior. Over at the right, you have a wider frame surrounding the day date of the Seiko NH36A. Which to me, if you're doing a Seiko 5 or an older retro Seiko, is vital to have that day date. It was one of those things that they're known for. Yet at the same time, as cool as this texture dial is, I think a dateless option would be a great fit here. At the top of the dial, we have their logo, which we already talked about. And at the very bottom, I like that they kept it simple and clean with a thinner fonted automatic. For the hands, we have a set of simple polished sticks that in a lot of the shots do look more black than polished, but that's just because of the studio lighting I have here and the dark background behind me. But trust me, they're very polished. In style-wise, I think they're a perfect complement to the indices. Yet, at the same time, I think they're far too short for the dial. And that may be the one real shortcoming to the design here. An hour hand really should be going to the outer edge of the indices, while the minute hand to the edge of the chapter ring, followed by a slightly longer second hand. Which at this point is something I feel every designer should know. And to be fair here, I think these shorter hands are keeping with the original inspiration. But just because you're doing an homage doesn't mean you need to make the same mistakes that they did. As homage means you're inspired by. And at that point, you should feel free to tweak things as you see fit, especially if you think it's an improvement. But that's probably going off on a tangent. Now as for Loom, well, let's just say it has it. But it's not very strong. It's nothing spectacular or really worth writing home about, so to speak. It's basically Vostok levels of Loom here. And for the style, I think that is perfectly fine, even if I would prefer more. As for the movement, in case you missed it earlier, this is a Seiko NH36A which is really a perfect fit for the price range. It's the ideal workhorse movement for the price, and especially when you want a day date. Moving on to the strap, the strap is pretty good for the price. Most Ollie watches, I almost immediately swap the strap to something else, but this is one I think I'd keep on the watch for a while. The black coloring may be a little boring, and it may need a little bit of breaking in at first, but overall it is a good strap. A bracelet option would also be great here, but at the moment, there isn't one. Lastly, let's talk value, and when it comes to AliExpress watches, their prices are always in flux. But currently, as of filming this, it's sitting around 190 bucks. Which, if you compare everything you're getting here to the general market, it's a fantastic price. Heck, some of those older Seiko 5s that have the same feel are going for around 100 bucks, if not more. And here, you're getting a better movement, sapphire, as well as a better build quality. Yet, this is an Ollie watch, and if you just focus in on other Ollie watches, this is more in the mid-range. So there are some that are more expensive, and other watches that are far cheaper. But I think this is better made than those cheaper steel dives or Paganis that are out there. And personally, I'd easily recommend Proxima or San Martin over those any day. All in all, it's a solidly built casual watch with a great size. And I particularly appreciate the unusual nature of the case paired with its stunning dial. It's a smaller watch, but it's one that has a lot of presence and depth here, all thanks to the various textures and layers. Plus, it's always good to see an interesting watch of this size come out of AliExpress. These days, it seems to be more about just diver homages. Now, of course, there are a few things that I tweak here just to make it more me. 
but for the watch itself, there really isn't any solid negative here. The only potential negatives I see is that it's an homage. And for some, that's just a no-go right there. But since this is inspired by an older, more obscure watch, I think most wouldn't mind that. That, and this is an Ollie watch. Most of the time, there aren't any issues when you order from AliExpress, but if something does happen, it's always much more of a headache to resolve. So whenever I'm looking at an AliExpress watch, I always like to throw up some general warning. Most of the time they're worth it, but it is something you should think about beforehand. And that is the Proxima PX1695 in a nutshell. Now, as usual, let me know your thoughts down below and let me know what you think about taking inspiration from those really older Seikos. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Shane, this is Relative Time, and I'll see you next time.